Uh, joining us now, L. Chris Stewart. He's the attorney for the family of Richard Brooks. Uh, Chris, thank you once again for joining us. Uh, first of all, give us an, uh, any update you can on where the investigation stands, where the case stands right now. Uh, we're awaiting the decision from the district attorney, Paul Howard. We saw the statement that he put out, uh, the options that he's weighing, and we're continuing to keep trying to find witnesses and video of the incident. Well, based on the video we've all seen, Chris, right now, what's your analysis of what we've seen? It showed you what kind of person Mr. Brooks was in the beginning of this incident. Um, it's literally what you tell people how to act when an officer approaches you. Even though he had had something to drink, he was polite. He was using sir. He was uh, conducted a 20 to 30 minute sobriety test, uh, did the leg stand, did everything um, possible. Um, and it should have ended when he said simply, can I walk to my sister's house? I'll lock my car up. It should have ended right there. That's what citizen uh, policing is about. You let him just walk home. He's not driving. He's not going to harm anybody. He's coherent. Let him walk home. But he but he had been driving. He drove to the uh, he, he drove to the Wendy's, right? Yes, he did drive to the Wendy's. Does, I, I assume the police were suspicious about uh, if he was driving under the, you know, you know while drunk. Uh, but uh, but you, you make an important point, though. He did say, I'll leave my car at the Wendy's and I'll walk to my sister's house. But that would, clearly wasn't good enough for the police. It wasn't good enough for Officer uh, Rolfe. The first officer uh, appeared to be contemplating. He said, pull over there and, and uh, apparently take a nap or, or sleep it off. Uh, the first officer actually was being polite, um, was trying to be understanding, um, and it escalated once Rolf got there, uh, who didn't want to allow any type of compassion or empathy or understanding or even let this man just walk home. Because when he started to handcuff him and put his hands behind his back, that's when, uh, uh, when Rayshard Brooks uh, started to resist, right? Yes. Should he have resisted at that point, or should he just complied? Well, I mean, I can't get into the mind of what he was thinking at that point. Um, I'm sure that, you know, having had a few drinks, maybe he didn't believe that he should be arrested at that point. But, you know, it's, it's beyond the point. You know, what happened in that moment when he resisted uh, doesn't allow a police officer to become judge, jury, and executioner. We watch videos all the time where it is a Caucasian individual or a person of a different race that resists and lives. We've watched videos of a person go do a mass shooting and live. Uh, there was absolutely no reason for him to die because he resisted and ran away. The uh, Fulton County Attor District Attorney, as you know, Paul Howard, uh, says a decision on charges against this police officer uh, who shot uh, Brooks uh, will be made, uh, and I'm quoting him now, uh, sometime around Wednesday, uh, and that uh, three charges were relevant under consideration, murder, felony murder, or voluntary manslaughter. What's your reaction to that? Uh, this is totally up to the District Attorney's office. I try to stay out of uh, the criminal charges or the work being done by the district attorney um, and just handle what uh, what we can do on our side. You know, we don't want to have any role in tainting the view of uh, what happens with the criminal charges. You have confidence in this district attorney? I have confidence in any district attorney that sees a videotape like this where an officer's life uh, was not an immediate threat of losing his life or immediate harm. Um, it was a taser, which falls under the exact category of pepper spray and a baton. So if he had been running with pepper spray and sprayed it backwards or waved the baton at the cop, uh, should he have been shot then? Well, basically, what you're saying is when he started to run away, the police, uh, the police officer should have just let him run away and then they could find a way to catch him later. They obviously had his uh, name. Uh, they had his car. They would have found him. They shouldn't. He shouldn't have taken out his gun and basically shot him in the back. Yeah, what it is with uh, a lot of policing and they're trying to do a examination of the totality of the situation. They saw that this individual was not aggressive in the beginning. They did a full pat down. So they knew he wasn't armed. They knew he didn't have a gun. They had his license. They had his vehicle. They had his keys. Um, he wasn't going anywhere. And if he did, they could find him. Uh, he ran away with the taser, which falls into the category of OC spray. 
uh, and a baton. Uh, he wasn't posing an immediate risk to anyone, but yet the officer opened fire in a packed parking lot. You want the DA to charge him with what, with murder? We want the DA to charge him with any of the um, different degrees that he's looking at right now. Like I said, I'm not gonna comment on Paul Howard's investigation. Because the, that police officer, uh, as you know, uh, he's been fired. The other police officer who was there, uh, he's been uh, reassigned basically to clerical duty. Uh, should the second police officer uh, who didn't fire the shots, should he be charged as well? We're still looking into uh, his behavior once the chase started. Um, I will say that his behavior when the entire incident began is what policing is supposed to be. Uh, as polite as he was, as understanding, even looking like he was going to let uh, him park on the side and sleep it off. Um, you know, that's the whole thing that I'm trying to get this entire country to get back to is community uh, before search and destroy. It is there will be situations where you have to give people a break, where you let someone sleep it off, where you let someone uh, lay down or walk home instead of putting cuffs on them. Um, but we're just too um, militarized in our policing in the community. Tell us how the family of Rayshard uh, Brooks is, is doing uh, right now. I know you're, you represent that family, uh, the kids, uh, everybody else. Uh, how are they doing? We can't, can't really describe it. I mean, think about an eight-year-old who now, on top of her birthday, is also going to remember that this is the day her dad was murdered on video for the rest of her life. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, it's a sad, and, and yesterday was, was her birthday, right? Yeah, and, um, you know, they're just trying to make it through. Yeah, we'll give, uh, give the family uh, our love, obviously, uh, and we'll stay in very, very close touch with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is a heartbreaking situation in Atlanta. We've certainly seen the fallout unfold. Uh, Chris Stewart is the attorney for the family of Rayshard Brooks. Thanks uh, so much for joining us. All right, thanks, Wolf. We'll continue this.